Hi everyone, this is John with the Guitars and Gear YouTube channel. So in today's episode, we've actually booted up the Quad Cortex. We're gonna go into the user interface, show you everything you need to know, and uh, just show you how great this is to use. It's a bit of a lengthy video, um, but I think you're gonna get a lot out of it and had a lot of fun bringing it to you. But before we get to that, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon down there and uh, that way you'll get notified of any new videos that come out. And so let's get right to it. So right in front of you here, we have the booted up quad cortex. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, this is it in its powered on form, <laughs> as we say. Um, so very cool to look at. Um, and you can see the interface is very much like the Helix. So in this kind of deep dive kind of look into the interface and how the quad cortex works, I'm not going to hear a lot of guitar at all but I just really wanted to go over in this video the user interface um, how easy it is and all that stuff so while we're zoomed out I will zoom into the screen a little bit closer when we start getting into the UI uh, but just so you can see it right now um, you can see that all the switches um, there's a b c d well a through h and these are going to be equivalent to all your stomp uh, and changing scenes and things like that um, these two buttons here is bank up and and down. So there's eight bank, eight presets per bank. And so you can switch between banks this way. Uh, this down here is your tap tempo and you can hold that down and you'll get a tuner as you can see right there. Uh, you can click done at the top and we're done with that. Uh, but you can bank up and down. You can change your presets and we go just like that. And you can see the preset number 1A, that A is green, which equates to the A button having a green light. And you can see B is blue, and C is kind of like an orangish yellow. And so D is kind of like this purple. So they're gonna be the same on every bank uh, equivalent to the preset. So 2D will also be purple, 3D will also be purple, and so on. Uh, so you can kind of get a visual of, you know, kind of what what you're looking at. So uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then, as I, as I said during the unboxing, each one of these is also a rotary encoder. We're going to get into that a little bit more uh, once we get into more of the interface. Uh, but basically that's what you have ins and outs are on top. We're going to get into showing you that on the display, which is really another neat feature. Uh, volume knob on this side. As you turn the volume knob, you can see that you do get uh, an indication of how much volume you currently have, which is very nice. And it just goes back to the screen afterwards. So that's kind of a general overview of what we're looking at right here. I'm going to zoom it in now. There you go, get a little closer up so we can see what's going on here. So what I'm gonna do uh, as I go through this, I'm gonna start over on this side, and we're gonna work our way over, and then we're gonna get into some, uh, how we're gonna edit presets and create our own preset, which will be really quick and easy, and you'll, you'll just see how easy that is. All right, so first off, let's, these three dots right here, let's click that. Okay, so you can see right here, we are in our user presets right now. Uh, and I'll show you that once we get into the directory. But in the file menu, which is the first one, you can see it says file. There's a create new, so it's create new preset, save as, edit details, preset MIDI out, add to favorites, and delete the preset. So you have all those options within file. Um, so let's just pick one. For edit details, for example, you can go ahead and change your preset name, add a hashtag. So if you do upload this one to the cloud, the Cortex cloud, which is Neural DSP's own cloud saving and directory service, uh, which is free and all that, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but you can put tags on there so people can better find it, or you can actually better find it too if you have tons of presets out there. Okay, so we'll cancel that, go back into the menu again. 
Uh, so that's basically it uh, as far as that goes. So pretty self-explanatory. On the quad cortex part, you can do a new neural capture. Now we will get into captures, but not in this video. It'll be a future video just dedicated to neural capture. And I'm gonna go ahead and capture uh, some settings on the Rev Generator 120 Mark III, which I think will be a lot of fun. We can do a capture or two and then compare it with the real amp and do some A-B comparisons. I think that would be great. Uh, tempo here, I showed you before that the tempo light was kind of going nuts so down there. So if you click on tempo, you can see that it's set to 120, which is the default. You can adjust the tempo um, right on the unit or with the rotary encoder. And you can also change it from preset uh, to per preset or for the scene or globally. So that's pretty cool. And you can see what it what it's showing here right here, preset tempo. Um, so that's what the tempo will be when the preset is saved. Each preset can have its own tempo. So that's kind of cool. And same thing for each scene. And then globally, the global is the same for each preset scene until you select a new one. So there you go. Um, so we have that set as preset, and that's by default. Okay, going back into the menu. Uh, so we covered neural capture, we covered tempo, CPU monitor. Now this is a really cool one. So as you can see up in the corner here, you have a CPU percentage is at 25%. Um, now I've gotten into some of the presets on here that are really a ton of stuff going on, and I haven't seen it hit 80% yet. So I'm not sure exactly how you would max this thing out <laughs> realistically. Um, I don't see using tons and tons of this stuff, but I did want to highlight it because it is very cool how they do this. And you can see like for the amp right here, you can see the level of CPU utilization it has, um, as well as the cabinets. You can see it uses a little bit of CPU. Um, you can see the delay and reverb do a little bit as well, or a lot actually. Um, so you can kind of gauge it. And even if, like let's just, we're gonna tap on this real quick and click bypass and say done. So you can see even if it's bypassed, it's still gonna utilize the CPU. It's always loaded regardless of whether the it's bypassed or not. So any effects you have in your signal chain is gonna use up CPU utilization regardless of whether it's engaged or not engaged, which kind of makes a lot of sense because they wanna load it all into memory and all into CPU uh, to make sure that when you're switching on and off between things, you're not getting any delay. And so everything's loaded in a preset when it loads in, regardless of whether it's bypassed or not. So very cool, cool stuff. All right, so to get out of the CPU utilization, you just hit the X up top and it's gone. Okay, so let's get back into our menu again. Uh, so that was CPU monitor settings is kind of a big menu. There's lots of stuff to go over here. Um, so you can see we're sitting on device options right now, but there's my account, where you'll set up your account information and link it to Neural DSP. So this will be your Neural DSP account information. And you're just basically doing that so you can link the device to your Neural DSP account, enabling that quad cortex and all, or the quad cloud stuff and all that good stuff. Uh, Wi-Fi, pretty self-explanatory, just your Wi-Fi settings. Um, so wherever you are, you can connect to Wi-Fi and you can download updates and do everything that you need to do. Uh, which we'll go into first here. So device options, device update. So this is kind of cool. Uh, you can update your device firmware over Wi-Fi, which is very, very nice. I'm so glad somebody's doing it. So device updates, your Quad Cortex is currently running a Core OS, and that is the name of the operating system that they designed, and it's designed around Android, which is cool. Um, so it's 1.0.0 right now at the time of this video, which is April 3rd. 2021. Uh, so if you want to see what's new, you can visit the blog. So they do have QR code. You can go do that. And if you want to check for updates, and we'll do it right now, you can see it's checking for new updates and it's going to say we're update. So there you go. No updates are available. You just say got it and you're back to the menu. So you can see on here, there's no back button for the device options because there's lots more options on here. If you click done, you're going to get back to your preset. But if you just click on the device options again, it's going to take you back 
So let's go look at each one. Disk space uh, comes with about 28 gigs of available space. Um, we have 25.7 gigs available. So I think some of that is being utilized for the OS and things like that um, because the presets and captures don't take up a lot of space at all in IRs. So you're basically left with uh, a lot of space because <laughs> I barely am scratching the surface here and I have a, a few things on here already that I did. Uh, so diagnostics, I don't think you're going to use this a whole heck of a lot. This will probably be more for if you're having issues and Neural DSP is asking you maybe to, you know, get in there and run some, you know, run some of this diagnostic stuff so they can see what's going on. But just for the heck of it, you can see all the core, the status of each core. Um, and a good way to look at these cores is there's actually two chips inside. Each one is a dual core to make four total cores. So we'll get into it on the grid later, but there's four lines on the grid. Line one and two are for core one and core two, and line three and four are core three and four, which equates to chip number one, chip number two. So you want to spread your signal chain around all of these, like at least between one and two and three and four, uh, so you can kind of balance your CPU load a little bit better. But anyway, there's that. I don't know what Zen coder stuff is. I have no idea, but I'm sure the normal guys would know that if they need to look at Zen coder statistics for any issues you might be having. USB statistics. I am connected to USB right now on my computer, so you can see that it is connected, but it's not really doing much right now. So you can say done there. Uh, let's go back to next option power button sensitivity now i haven't had any issues with the power button being you know with the sensitivity of the power button um, so if we zoom out a little bit you can see that the power button is right up above the volume um, and the power button is a touch sensitive button it's not really a button it doesn't push it doesn't wear out it's just touch sensitive uh, i haven't had any issues but if you do if you end up, you know, like if you have issues on your cell phone trying to push stuff and you have to increase sensitivity on that, uh, certain people's fingers just have more electrical impulse than others. Um, you can all, you can set that higher or lower depending on uh, depending on your need. Okay, so that's kind of nice to have. Brightness, so you can see I'm at brightness one. This thing gets very very bright, and I'll just brighten it all the way up for you, and you can see the thing gets really bright. It might not show up on camera much, but geez, it's like almost blinding when you're in the room. Um, I set it down to all the way down to one, and I have no issues seeing it. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it'll help out a little bit with heat or anything like that, but it, you know, I just find that one is fine. Um, so that's brightness. You can go to about. And that gives you information on software information, so you can see all that. And you can see how it is built on the on the Linux kernel, so that's kind of cool. Uh, let's not hit done. Let's go back. And hardware information, you can see that. Uh, and then restart. So you can do restart device. Any unsafe changes will be lost, so you can do either cancel or restart. Um, you can do it there which is fine, or you can do it also if I hold down the power button, then you can see we have cancel, shutdown, reboot, and standby. Uh, shutdown is just what you think it is. Reboot is just what you think it is. Standby, what standby does is it shuts off all the inputs and outputs and turns the screen off, and that's it. So if you do a standby and then you want to go right back into your device, it'll come right back where you left it. So if we do standby right now, and then we just touch and hold the power button for a second, it puts us right back to where we were, which is really cool. Um, and we're right there too. Uh, next things, you can reset your Wi-Fi settings and you can do a factory reset. Okay, very cool. MIDI settings. So this is typical, I guess, MIDI settings. So you can select your MIDI channel with this drop-down menu. Um, you can do MIDI through, it's either on or off, it's set to off by default. MIDI over USB is set to on by default, and uh, that's probably what I'll just use if I need anything. Uh, and then contact us, uh, you can go to their support, and if you want to contact support, you can contact them at support at neuraldsp.com, and if you want to go to the forums and check it out at unity.neuraldsp.com, there's a QR code, so that's very cool, so you can just you know, take a picture of that with your phone or put your camera up to it and it'll go to that for you. Uh, you can send a 
report to them. If you are having issues, you report, you have a bug, bug report that you need to send to them. You can do that there. And you go to about and you can just see where Neural DSP is located. If you have to send them a, a nice letter <laughs> or something, I don't know. Uh, so there you go. So that, uh, let's see, I think that is everything we want to talk about with the settings. So there you go, let's click done, and now we're back to the presets. Okay, next up is this save icon here. So if you're in the factory presets, you cannot save unless you do a save as. So this button will not be highlighted, but you can go in here and click on save as and save it to your own preset. So that's how you would go ahead and edit the factory presets if you wanted to save all those edits. You add it to your own presets. Um, but if there is a change, so let's make a change here. Let's change the reverb and we'll mess around with the high pass and we'll say done. And now you can see that the title there is italicized and there's a asterisk there, which shows that a change has occurred. Now, you can tap the save right there and save it, so we'll do that. And now you can see it went back to normal font and it's saved. Now let's say we wanted to save, let's say we made a change and we're like, oh, darn it, I really didn't want the high pass to be there and I already changed it and I don't really remember what I changed it, what it was before. There's an undo right there. So you can click undo and now it's going to undo that change. You, or maybe, oh, it's going to unchange the done. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? And you can do it again. And now that changed it back to its original value of 90. So there we go. Uh, so that's save, basically, and undo. And you can redo also. If you click that button, you can redo those changes that you did before as well. So just say you cannot really make up your mind about what you want to do. All right, so you see this yellow A. Let me get in closer again. Okay, sorry, I was out that whole time too. But anyway, uh, so save, undo, redo. This little A right here. So this is telling you on this particular preset, this is the scene that you're currently sitting at. So if we go... Um, so let's get down to, this brings us to this preset icon or preset word and the icon next to it. Now I said before that if you hold the two mode buttons, which are, zoom out again. So these two buttons right here, those two together, you can switch between scene and stomp. And you can see the switches that are that are switching to show that. So in preset mode, now you can also just touch this and get into scene mode. So as you can see down here, we're on A. So if we change that to B, you can see this change to B, C, D, H. So you can have up to eight scenes per preset. Basically what a scene is, is it's your same signal chain. So whatever you have in here, uh, it's just a modification of that signal chain. So let's just pretend like we didn't want this on. So we can bypass that in that scene and say, okay, if we go back to H, you can see that it's on. In G, we changed it to be off. So you can do that. You can load this up with as much uh, effects and anything you want in your signal chain and turn things on and off. You could have four amplifiers in there, say, but for certain presets, you're only using one. For certain ones, you're using two of them. Uh, you can change the parameters of each one of those items as well. So uh, as we go back into here, and let's unbypass that for a second, any of these parameters that you can change per scene. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and you can see you can assign different scenes this way as well. So you can make a change to each one of these and then just assign it a different scene as you see fit. So very cool. All right, let's zoom back in again. 
and we'll say done here. Okay, so now we're back here. So we've talked about the scene, pretty good here. Um, stomp mode, so you can see in the stomp mode, and gosh, I really should zoom back out for all of this portion. So you can see in stomp mode how everything is highlighted uh, that does have a stomp effect on it. Uh, so you can see A is the amplifier, and it's red to match the amplifier. B is that cabinet. C is that cabinet. You can see D over here is here, and then the amp is way over on A. So it seems kind of off to me. <laughs> so let's just say you wanted to change that and make it make a little bit more sense because maybe you wanted D to be A and A is the next one in the list uh, just to follow your signal chain, if that makes sense. So if we click on, let's click on this stop. So this is a green 808 pedal, just basically a uh, tube screamer. And we want to assign that instead of having it assigned to D, let's assign it over to A. Okay, and let's say done. Okay, now that leaves our amp with nothing. But let's say we want the amp to be on B. So let's click on the amp, and we have a Brit Plexi 100 Bright, and we're going to assign that to B, because that's where we want it. And we're going to say OK. OK, so now we have A, B. Now, oh, we're missing a cabinet in there. So why don't we make this cabinet C, so we can also assign that to a switch. And we're going to assign that to C. And say done. And now this guy doesn't have anywhere to go, so we're going to assign him to D. And done. So now our signal chain kind of makes a little more sense as far as the stomp mode goes. There's that, there's that. Now see these are a little off too. Oh. So you can kind of hear that little buzz there. So that's the adapt, probably the adaptive gate, I'm guessing. Oh no, it's a simple gate. Very cool. Uh, I found the adaptive gate on this thing is just awesome. Okay, so you can see everything that we changed here. We have an asterisk. It wants us to save. We've changed something. We're currently on G is our scene. So I'd rather have that. Let's go back to scene mode. I'd rather have it on A. And we'll go back to stop mode maybe. And now we can save that. So we'll save it. And boom, now we're saved. So, cool stuff. Okay, so let's move on. Now, the directory mode is a direct is a mode that shows you all of your presets, all of your captures, all of your favorited stuff, everything basically that's on the device is in the directory. I found it very difficult to find the directory at first. Uh, maybe I just didn't, I don't like reading instructions, <laughs> which a lot of you probably don't either. Um, but just to give you a very simple thing, tap on stuff is your friend on this thing. Um, you tap the name of anything that's up there and you're gonna get fall right into the directory. And so you can see I'm on my presets right now, but you can go into the factory library and view all of these. Now how this is broken out is this over here is the directory of what you're looking at. So factory library within there is 32 banks we're on bank one right now. Within bank one is eight presets. I kept wanting to scroll this thing and maybe Neural DSP you can make an update where you can scroll this and then it just moves these around you know, based on what bank you're in at the current time. But this works just as well too. I just keep wanting to kind of scroll a list but because you can over here, but you can't over here, but that's fine. You hit bank two and there's all eight presets in bank two, bank three, you know, say you just want to see what's in bank 11 or 15, you can do that. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, at the top here, which I neglected to do, is any recent stuff. So you can see we we're just an expressive lead. Uh, so that was our recent preset of what we did. Um, our favorites, which I don't have any, but these are favorites on the device itself. Anything that you favorited on the device is going to appear here. Um, there we go to our factory library again. My pre 
oh, my presets, which I have some in here. A lot of these I brought in from the cloud stuff, so you can see that. Um, factory captures, now there is a ton here. And there's two different um, uh, directories, I guess you should say, you could say, or set lists of all of these captures. Now this is very much like the Kemper uh, profiles. Uh, the captures, think of them as pretty much the same idea. Um, so you can see all these, uh, what is this, Bogna fish. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ones that are look identical, but there's slight changes in there. So you can think of this the same way as you think of the Kemper profile is a snapshot in time of that amplifier setting. So if you make any changes, either like the treble gain, uh, the levels, the master volume, I don't know, presence, depth controls, things like that on your amplifier, and then you go and capture it, uh, that's a snapshot of that portion in time of that amplifier. So if you see multiple ones, it's probably different settings of that amplifier. Um, but I mean, there is just a literally a ton of these things. And the really cool thing too is out on Cortex Cloud, there's a ton more that you can bring in as well. So very, very cool stuff. Um, like I said, you get two of those and you can see there's a lot of base ones here too. So you see, see some dark glass stuff there. Um, my captures, you can see that I brought these in. I didn't capture these myself. I brought these in from Cortex Cloud. So you can see there's a PV Invective. There's a TS-808. That was from Arbia's uh, capture. So, you know, you can follow certain people on there. And there are some YouTube influencers, some, some you know, some musicians out there that have their own um, stuff out there that you can grab, which is very cool. Uh, you can see all this EVH 5115 Mark III stuff that's out there too. It's very cool. Um, and I have a few different ones on there. There's a blue guitar amp one, Iridium, that somebody took a bunch of captures of, which is which is pretty neat too. Uh, so you can see there's a lot that you can do. Impulse responses. These are my impulse responses that I put in there. Well, not mine personally, but ones I had on my computer that I could import in. Um, the way you do that is through their online um, website. Um, you can get into Cortex Cloud there. And currently, the only thing you can really do is upload your IRs there. Once you upload them there, because your account is linked on your Quad Cortex, you can go in and just download those impulse responses right to the unit. We'll get into that too. Uh, so let's go into Cloud Directories. You have presets. Um, I put one preset out there just to kind of show that it's, you know, how to do it, but we'll get into that. I have no captures out there and the impulse responses are all mine. Now, here's something really interesting that I think Neural DSP can really fix. Um, I have all these downloaded already on my Quad Cortex, but it still shows download. Like it doesn't know that they're there already. So this, everything you're seeing here is from the Cortex cloud. This is not local when it loads this, so you can refresh it it's going out to the internet, going to Cortex Cloud, and bringing in all of your IRs or presets or captures that are out there on the cloud. When you hit download on here, it says downloading, but it says, hey, your imp this impulse response already exists on your Quad Cortex. Do you want to overwrite it or do you want to rename it? So I already did it. Um, so it would be nice to have an indicator that says downloaded already and like make it red or green or something like that to show it's already been downloaded uh, maybe a future update guys if anybody from Norrell is watching maybe that's a cool thing to to do because it, it would just make it easier and that's the same with either presets or anything else too that it's going to become really cumbersome to know what did i download and what didn't i download um, so that'd be a quick if you got hundreds or thousands of these things that would make it a lot easier um, so here's all the starred stuff. So this is where I was getting to presets and neural captures and things like that. So the presets, um, so these are everything that I starred on the neural um, mobile app. And so you can get that app on iOS or Android and you can go through everybody's captures and presets and favorite them. So when you star them or favorite them, 
uh, it'll appear on this list on your quad cortex because you're linked to your quad to your neural DSP account. And same issue here though, you know, when you click download, it does download to your unit. It tells you where you want to save your preset, but it doesn't exactly um, save it. It doesn't actually show you that it's been saved to your device, which is kind of annoying. Uh, neural captures, again, same kind of thing, but still very cool that it all appears here, everything that you favorited. Shared with me is the last item on here. So items that your friends have shared with you will appear. You have to become friends with somebody. You both need to follow each other on the, uh, on the, on the Cortex app. Now soon, apparently, uh, their web page on your computer, you'll be able to go there, log in with your neural DSP account, and get into Cortex Cloud and see all the same stuff there too. Um, and on their app that they're going to come out with that isn't out yet, which is going to be an editor for the PC, it's going to be a separate application, that will also incorporate all this Cortex Cloud stuff into it as well. So you'll be able to just get it from anywhere. All right. So that kind of covers the directory stuff. Um, let's get back into my presets real quick. So I wanted to show you something here. So let's say that you created a preset. Um, let's see, I already did that one. Let's say you wanted this Invective Johnny one. This is one I, <laughs> I just kind of messed with and uh, see if you want to do anything with that. If you click and hold it, you can either delete it, which shows boom like that, or you can copy it up to the cloud and put it out there so other people can find it. So if you do that and it uploads, you can see it uploading, so it's uploaded. So now if I go to, and these are our cloud directories, if I go to presets, and then you can see it's up there and ready to download. So anybody out there on the on the cloud can go ahead and, uh, and browse that one and save it if they wanted to. So pretty cool. Um, Let's see, is there anything else I wanted to go in here? Oh yeah, one more thing. So we have new set list. So what this is, is if we click on new set list and we'll give it a set list name. So we'll just say uh, test for now, for lack of a better word, we'll click on create. And now you can see under the device directories, you can see that now there's a test set list. So think of this factory library as a set list my presets is a set list and test is a set list so within test we have another 32 banks of eight presets each which is pretty cool i mean there's a lot that you can do here um, so just for instance if we take one of my presets and we'll take this one and can i drag it over here and copy it over did that work um, maybe not. So maybe you can't do that. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, you can create your own set your own set list this way. So if we go under our test one and we go up to delete, we can just delete that, and now we're back to where we were. Okay, so that's basically the directory right there. Um, and that's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's let's mess with a why don't we mess with a new preset? So let's go into preset mode and let's go back into the directory and let's get a blank preset here. So let's go to 2B since we don't have anything there yet. And you can see it's a nice clean preset with nothing going on. So let's do a quick, right, like just from scratch. Let's create something here. So uh, what do we need? We need an amplifier. So let's go in here under guitar and we'll do a, what the, what the heck did I pick? Okay. A Brit Plexi 100 normal. There you go. Cool. And let's see, let's put a cabinet, right? So we need a cabinet. So let's put a cabinet out there and let's do a, let's do a Brit, right? Um, since that's what we have. So the 4 by 1260A, there we go. Now, let's see, this is just a generic preset and I do have my guitar connected so we can see if this makes any sound. And, yep. It does, so we got some sound already and we barely did anything. 
So see, we're going out output one and two, and that's the outputs that I have going out to my audio interface. Even though this is an audio interface, I'm using a separate one, um, which is good, which is fine. So now let's say we want to add a second speaker cab. So we can do that fairly easily. Let's just click in here. If you click and hold, it's going to bring you up to this splitter. So let's see what we want to do here. Do we want to, let's do this one. And these are just basically kind of presets, but you can do splitting any which way you want. So let's just say we want this here and that there, because we want to add a cabinet down here. So let's say done. And let's click and add another cabinet. And we're going to change it all up. We'll do something like that. There we go. And nice. So let's see if that still sounds good. <laughs> Yep, sounds okay. All right, and so now let's just pretend, I keep wanting to move my mouse to do this. Um, so let's just pretend we wanna put something out here and say we wanted to put a reverb. Okay, we could do that right there. Um, but let's say like we're out of space on this line or we just wanna bring it, we wanna expand it and bring it down because we don't wanna limit ourselves. On, with the space that we have here for whatever reason it doesn't matter um, so what do we want to do let's let's utilize this third row here so if we go out one and two you get all these options you can see we're set on output one and two right now um, but let's go down to row three so we can go to row three just like that so now it shows row three over here is previous row and we want this to go to Output one and two. Boom. So now we have another row of our signal chain. So let's put that reverb back over here now. And we'll just do a hall reverb and put that. Now let's see if we still have a signal. See if we did that right. Yep, sounds pretty good to me. Um, but let's just say um, we didn't like what we did there. We want to change it back or we want to get rid of it. So we can just hit that back button. And now we change our mind again. Say, uh, yeah, you know what? I did want it. So we'll do the redo. <laughs> Undo and redo and redo it and put it back. So, uh, so now what you're seeing here is this row one and two is using one CPU with two cores. So core one and core two. This is row three and four, and that's using another physical chip inside the device with, with two cores also. So think of it as now we're using both cores or both CPU, physical CPUs, and we're using three cores total. Okay, so that's how you might want to spread that out. So if we go and look at our uh, CPU usage while we're in here, our CPU monitor, you can see we're at 21%, and we can see the levels at which we're utilizing those. Now, one more thing I wanted to, well, maybe a few more things, but in these particular cabinets, let's just say, you know, I don't want this stuff in there, right? Uh, or I don't want to use these uh, microphones. I want to use my own IRs basically, right? So let's go in here and here's how you select your own IRs. You have all these different microphones to use for all the built-in IRs, which are all, all really good. Uh, from what I what I've seen so far, you can click on load IR. Now this is going to bring us back to our directory where we had our impulse responses. If you guys remember, so let's just say we wanted to use a Rev 212 instead, and we can select that. Now, what did that do to our signal chain? Let's see how this sounds now. <laughs> the same thing to this one and we'll change to another IR and let's see we'll go to I see, see I keep wanting to scroll those um, let's do a 5150 with an I think it's an MD421 so let's see how this sounds now let's see how it sounds And now let's say we don't want this to be so big of a mix. It's an awful big reverb. 
and we'll turn that down a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so let's just pretend like, all right, our signal chain is kind of where we want it. Um, and let's just save this. So you can see it's unsaved by default. So if you just hit the save, you could go in here and you can't even do save as. So the only thing you can really do is click this save. Because it's not a preset currently, it's an unused space, uh, we have to name this brand new. So let's just call this test again for lack of anything better and if we want to put a tag we can we'll just call it not est but test and and just so you know the sensitivity is really good it's just i'm on a way on an angle here trying to do this so uh so now we save it now we see 2b is test you can see that we saved it successfully right there um and we're all good to go. So if we click on this and it shows up right there in test. Now let's say, yeah, you know what? I changed my mind. I hate that preset. You can click it and delete it. And now it's gone. So if we do done and go back, we can see that 2B is now unsaved again. So uh, we go back to 2A and yeah, sorry, my four cable <laughs> method one. But let's bank down and go into our expressive lead and we can go into H and all the different ones that we have. So there we go. So that is the signal chain. Um, okay, so now uh, let's take a look at the inputs and outputs. So there's a really cool way that we can take a look at that right from the unit itself. If we swipe down from the top, boom, just like that, then you can see that we are uh, currently we have highlighted the green one which is capture out which we're not even currently using um, but you can see everything that's highlighted in white is all the ins and outs that we are currently using uh, with the exception of the out one and out two here um, I add, do actually have those plugged in right now and they are being used right now so I'm not exactly sure why they're not highlighted in white um, they should be I think um, but maybe that's a bug, um, normal DSP, if you're watching. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at some of this stuff here. So you can see the USB port right there is highlighted because it is plugged in. So if we go ahead and click on that, we can show all of the parameters that have to do with the USB. So we have the USB levels here. We have the ins and outs. The, there's in one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and, and all the outs. So they have all those listed there that we can mess with. Um, as far as input, this is where our guitar is currently plugged in. So we can do our in level, our impedance, and the type, whether it's an instrument or a microphone. Um, if it is set to mic, then we can set our phantom power to 48 volts on and off. So you can do that on inputs one and two, which is really nice. Uh, ground lift, you can turn that on or off, and uh, you can display the current level right there. So as you're playing, it'll, um, it'll show your input level, which is very nice as well. Um, so we do see we have our send one, return one, and our out three. I'll select right now. That's because I do have this using the four cable method going into the rev uh, amp that I have here. So I was testing that out earlier. And um, so we'll definitely get into some videos on that later on. But uh, you can see those are all connected. Um, you can see like the headphone input, you can set the out level. I do have that boosted a little bit. Um, and the, you know, just the headphone level and the out one and two level. So you can check out both of those as well. Um, so yeah, anything on here, you can just click it and get an idea. Um, you can see this uh, return one level I do have boosted a little bit too. Um, this output level I do have boosted a little. So yeah, there's just a lot that you can tweak on here and it's really cool to get just a snapshot and take a look at what's currently plugged in and where all your levels are which is very, very cool. All right, so that's just a general overview of that. So let's uh, let's get out of that. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you guys, is something called Gig View, and you can get to that through just swiping up. I uh, swiping up, there you go. <laughs> now, from whatever view you're currently in, either preset, scene, 
or stomp is what this is going to come out to as default when you swipe up on there. Um, so you can see right now we have all of our um, different banks on there. And if we go in, I'm just pressing the buttons on the banks, you can see that it's switching and it does have that highlighted color also, which is very nice. Um, so let's go down, let's, let's just see, all right, now you, you are on stage and you have these eight uh, icons there and they're all color coded, but you really can't see it well enough. You can tap it again and make that even bigger. So you can actually see the text there a little bit better if your eyesight is bad like mine. Uh, and then you can still go ahead and scroll through all of your inputs on the banks, which is very nice. Uh, and if you just tap that again, it'll go back to the normal view. So that's, that's pretty cool. Now, when you go up a bank, this is a little bit different. You have to select which uh, actual switch that you want to engage within that bank. So once you select one, I'll select A and we'll select it again. And now it goes back into that gig view for you. It's the only one that works like that only because it gives you the option of using the foot switch to basically select which scene or which uh, preset you want within the bank. So up here, we can also select which mode we want to be in. Of course, we can still do that with the foot switch as well. But if we tap on preset, now we're in scene mode. So which is really cool is you can put whatever text you want in here for each scene, as they did here, <laughs> giving you instructions on how to set up the four cable method, which is actually very cool. Uh, very unique and uh, neat way of doing it. So on here, you cannot do the same thing where you tap it and it opens up into a new um, uh, thing, but you can uh, select each individual preset uh, as it switches to each preset as you go up and down. And you can also use this to change your scene. And then the up and down buttons. Let me zoom out so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. I should have had that zoomed out probably before, but so you can see as I'm hitting the up and down is changing the preset and then you can see the scenes within each preset. So you can see as we scroll through and you can see the highlighted color is the color of that individual preset as well. So if we go into stomp then we can see all the stomps and we can turn those on and off with our fingers or simply with the buttons that are highlighted. And of course they're all highlighted um, based on that color that you have as well, based on the preset color. So if we go back here, or maybe not, let's see, stomp, scene. So, okay. Yeah, so I guess it doesn't, it isn't, it's just blue. <laughs> so I take that back. Or maybe, no, it is. Hang on. If we close, let's go to a different preset. Um, that's probably a bad one. Let's try uh, this one. And now we'll go to stomp. And we can see, like, if we start engaging these, and it's act the actual color uh, for the most part. I guess, of the uh, preset, or of the, uh, yeah, of the effect. So go back into a different one, go to this expressive lead one again, and go into stomp. And there you can see it a little bit better, how the colors are highlighted on the foot switches. May not even come through very well um, on the video, but it's something I wanted to highlight, that gig mode is pretty cool, and it's there. If you need it, it's great. If you never need it, if you don't go on stage and you're just using this in your house or something, it might be nice to have, but maybe not something that you're always going to use. And uh, like I said, that is a really cool thing. I just kind of learned that. I don't know if that's even in the manual. It probably is, and I just don't really read manuals. But uh, when you're done with that gig view, you can just hit close and you're back to normal. Okay, I think that's about everything I wanted to cover in this video. I know it's gone a little bit long, but uh, I thought it was important to just kind of go through and do a deep dive over everything that's in the unit and, you know, kind of not everything that's in it, but, you know, kind of how the UI works, how the buttons work uh, and all that good stuff, too. 
So I uh, thought it was, uh, if you thought this was good, let me know. Uh, leave a note in the comments. We will have more videos. Like I said, we're going to be doing some captures and trying that out. Uh, we'll also go with, you know, into some more details on the cloud stuff and look at the cloud app on the phone and go through some of that stuff too. So if you did like the video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon down below so you know when a new video is coming. Uh, I do intend to have like one to two videos a week. And if you're interested in a podcast, we have our Guitars and Gear podcast, which you can listen to on whatever podcast, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, I guess. And uh, we do that every week. We cover news, current events, some gear stuff. Um, yeah, and just a lot of off topic kind of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. We have a, f a fun time doing it. So if you're at all interested in that, that is once a week, every week. And uh, yeah, so you can get it either way you want. Anyway, thanks again for watching and we will talk to you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.